Today we take a close look at some of the printed circuit boards of the RCA 501 of 1958. RCA, one of the largest electronics companies in the world in the 1950s, entered the large computer business in 1956, with its 25,000 vacuum tube giant the Bismack. In stark contrast, RCA's new 501 was primarily transistor-based, built from hundreds of plug-in transistor and diode-based logic boards. During the 1960s, RCA was one of the top eight computer makers, all competing against the dominant influence of IBM. In addition to the 501, RCA also produced the 301, 601, and the Specialized Model 110 militarized computer, and later the IBM 360-compatible RCA Spectra line, followed by the RCA 3301 and 3302 mid-range computers. However, due to the high costs of R&D and increasing competition, RCA suffered major financial losses and exited its computer manufacturing business in 1971. It sold its assets to Sperry Rand. Sperry's Univac division assumed ongoing responsibility for supporting RCA's installed computer base. A vital part of the 501 system was a series of magnetic tape stations, each with its own circuit board cage containing over 100 cards. Tape station cards were typically 8 and 3 quarters inches by about 4 inches. The layout of the components on the various cards were produced in different configurations. This illustration from an original RCA manual of 1958 is one example. This second example is from a tape system and clearly bears the RCA logo on the reverse side. More about its components later. Some of the circuit boards installed in the CPU itself were smaller and affixed to 8 by 6 inch motherboards, which then plugged into the main CPU backplane. In total, the CPU contained nearly 700 circuit boards, as well as separate timing modules. Sold as a high-speed business computer that bridged scientific and commercial applications, it was smaller and less expensive than the larger IBM and Univac systems. Since a maximum of 63 tape units were possible, depending on configuration, the total printed circuit boards used by the machine could easily reach 1,000 or more. From a technical standpoint, the RCA501 was a binary machine with a 48-bit word length. It featured a basic memory cycle time of 10 microseconds and memory capacities ranging from 16,000 to 260,000 characters of magnetic storage. It used punched card and paper tape input and high-speed printer output as well as magnetic tape. Its transistorized design gave it the advantage of taking up only one-fourth the amount of floor space as vacuum tube machines, and required considerable less power and cooling to operate. Historical sales records for the 501 are somewhat scarce. In total, approximately 70 of the 501 systems were eventually produced, many in the $1 million range, depending on size and configuration. Here is a sample board design and some of its components. This RCA PCB is a discrete logic type board. Components are discreetly placed on the board, not as part of a manufactured circuit such as a true integrated circuit or IC. ICs did not come into general use in computer circuit boards until after the mid-1960s, when they became very valuable in military and aerospace projects and were later refined for widespread commercial use. Looking at this RCA board, the reddish-brown substrate is most likely composed of a phenolic paper laminate code named FR2. FR2 is a designation from the National Electrical Manufacturers Association or NEMA, a standard for PCB substrate materials of this time period. It is made of phenolic resin bonded to layers of paper. Phenolic laminates were cheap to produce compared to early fiberglass epoxy laminates. Computers like the RCA501 used a great many boards and cost effectiveness was critical. They were also easily drilled or punched for components and did not require expensive machine processing. With some variation in technique, the connecting lines on the backside of the board could have been created using the following steps. First, the board was laminated with a thin sheet of copper. Next, an acid resistant coating was applied in the shape of the desired circuit pattern usually by silk screening. Then the board was placed in an acid bath, and the unprotected copper was dissolved away, leaving only the traces. Then the protective resist was stripped off, exposing clean copper traces. The traces were then coated with solder, a process called tinning, to protect against oxidation and improve conductivity. And finally, component holes and connector slots were drilled or punched for assembly. The RCA logo or other identifying symbols or part numbers would have been added during this process, or stamped or inked on at a later time. Lastly, the quality control inspection of finished boards could be a partly manual and or electrical process, depending on the board maker's needs. This excerpt from a 1950s RCA film shows a similar circuit board making process. 
At each stage of assembly, inspectors judge with a trained eye the work of men, yes, and the work of machines. For example, printed circuit boards are soldered instantly in a single operation. This type of design and soldering assures the same reliable electrical performance as demanded and used in such exacting equipment as computing machines and guided missiles. Even this mechanical operation is checked. Over 17 million printed circuit boards have already been produced for RCA Victor consumer products alone. Amazing testimony to the effectiveness of printed circuit boards is the fact that less than two-tenths of one percent has been required for spare parts replacement stock. Every solder joint on each printed circuit board is checked by a trained eye. It must have just the right amount of solder, not too much, not too little, but just enough. In this image, you can see how individual transistor logic components were attached to the board and soldered on the reverse side. The orange blocks are delay line modules, used to provide precise timing delays for pulse shaping and synchronization. The orange and black modules are sealed transmission line coils, wound to exact electrical lengths and encapsulated in epoxy blocks for stability. The solid block appearance comes from the protective resin case, which ensured mechanical strength and long-term timing accuracy. The box drawing gives an idea of what it might look like inside. It appears that the overall function of the board was a pulse delay timing module. The combination of 0.25 microsecond and 0.50 microsecond delay lines, discrete amplifier stages, and resistive capacitive network were used to generate or align logic pulses within the system. These boards were the building blocks of RCA's transistorized design. Some final thoughts. The relatively large size of the 501 board was fascinating. A quick comparison was done between this board and other boards from RCA and 10 other computer makers. No exact match from another vendor was found. However, two interesting findings were noted from our RCA sources. First, this statement by RCA itself. The final pin connector boards retain the basic features of the RCA 301 and RCA 501 designs. An illustration of a 601 board seems to show the same size as the 501 board. Secondly, a side-by-side -side comparison with an actual computer board from an RCA 110 machine showed the exact same dimensions as the 501 board, as shown here. The specialized RCA 110 machine has a very thick conformal coating for ruggedization. That machine was designed for use by NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center to develop the ground launch system for the Saturn V rockets at Cape Canaveral. The conformal coating protected the card from dirt, vibration, moisture, static electricity, and other potential hazards, resulting in much higher reliability and performance. From the available documentation on the systems mentioned, there is no evidence that any of the cards were plug compatible from one RCA system to another. However, some cards used in peripheral devices for a 501 may have been compatible with similar peripherals supporting the 601 as well. All cards did seem to follow RCA's modular design concept for ease of manufacture, maintenance and field replacement. When RCA sold its computer business to Sperry in 1971, the RCA Spectra 70 series was rebranded as the Univac 90 series of machines. The older RCA computers, the 301, 501, 601 and 110A, were maintained under Univac service contracts until retired. However, RCA's Military 4100 line was not renamed with the Univac brand. Sperry honored existing Department of Defense and NASA maintenance contracts. Ongoing support, parts, and service were absorbed into Sperry's Defense Systems Division. The RCA 3300 family came under the general support umbrella of Univac, but they were not specifically rebranded with the Univac name. This concludes our brief look at some of the component boards of the RCA 501 and some of the repercussions of the 1971 transfer of RCA's installed computer base to Sperry Univac. We hope to explore these subjects further as more archival information becomes available. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding some of the events of that time. Thank you.